So I, I, I made the assertion that the only way to grow was uh, to create a whole new subcategory. My brand versus your brand mm. is not, it just almost never results in growth. Mm. So I wrote a, a new book, the, my most recent book called Owning Game-Changing Subcategories to, to really reposition this whole concept around subcategories. And the only way to grow is to create new subcategories and so on. Right. So David, in that book, um, if, we, if we, now there's a segue, let's get into that first. You've said that this is the way, uh, this is in the digital age, that's the best way uh, to grow uh, more than what organizations have been focusing on, which is creating a brand preference. So why is that, David? Would you elaborate a little on that? Uh, yeah, I, like I, I, studied, I, started, I started off studying the beer data in Japan. I, I spent a lot of time in Japan. I've been there 40 times. I was an uh, executive advisor to Dentsu for a long time. Um, so I got a hold of beer data and I looked at the beer data in Japan and, and over 30 years, there was only four times the market share trajectory changed despite enormous new product work, enormous marketing. And they were all when a new subcategory was formed, mm. uh, like Asahi's Dry or, or uh, um, a few others. and. And then I looked at computers, and it was the same thing. If you look at over 40 years, you look at surges of growth, it was always a new category. It was the, uh, it was, you know, the Sun Microsystem, or it was the Apple. And, and so they always created new subcategories. And then I looked at a dozen other product areas, and it was the same thing. So I, I, I made the assertion that the only way to grow was uh, – to create a whole new subcategory. My brand versus your brand mm. is not, it just almost never results in growth. Mm. And, and this, uh, even this, this has been true forever. You know, it, the, I think the most robust and uh, empirical finding or, or empirical law that we have in marketing, mm. the most accepted, the most studied, is that if you if you try to predict new product success, mm. there's one variable that stands out, and this has been true for for a hundred years. Mm. I I can tell you studies in the fifties that were that showed this, mm. and and that is the single variable that predicts new product success is how different it is. Mm. Forever, me too products struggle. Mm. forever mm. so then comes digital mm. and that put this whole phenomenon which has existed forever mm. on steroids because uh, three things uh, appear with digital one is simple technology mm. the internet mm. the iphone the internet of things mm. all those technical things have spawned hundreds of, of extremely successful new subcategory formations. The yeah. second thing is the, uh, the speed. You know, new subcategories, you know, in the case of Japan, four of them in 30 years. But now they come out, you know, twice a year. Mm. It's, it's just the, 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 the number, the sheer number of these things that appear that – you know, Dollar Shave Club started off as a e-commerce shaving thing, and four years later, it was sold for a billion dollars. Mm. I mean, it, it used to take it, it take a long time, and and now it's so fast, and mm. that's because of, e, of e-commerce in in part. <clears throat> and then you have the phenomenon of of a website mm. and social media. Mm. And that has made communication so much different. It used to be that if you want to communicate a whole new product, it required tens of millions of dollars. It required nine months. You had to create an advertising platform. Then you had to buy ads. Mm. A Dollar Shave Club went on, uh, created a three-minute video, a three-minute video. 
And you can go on YouTube and, and look at it. Yeah. It was, it was extremely funny, very outrageous. <laughs> yeah. It made fun of the big brands. And they got um, 12,000 new customers in two days. Right. So David, what, what are the ways that companies can uh, make sure that they are uh, finding subcategories? One of the things you have to do is to keep your, your, uh, your ability to sense what's happening out there. Mm -hmm. And uh, it needs to be a, a market sensing. My colleague, George Day, would, wrote books on how you be market sensing a company. Mm -hmm. And uh, so that when something happens in the marketplace, the customer is, uh, is changing in some way. There's a new trend that you understand it and you detect it early. Mm -hmm. But you also have to be on the, uh, on the, on the, te the technology side, especially in the digital age. Steve Jobs was really good at that. Mm -hmm. He would wait until the technology was ready mm -hmm. before he came out with the iPod, which appeared two years after um, at, uh, Sony had Sony, done it. Yeah. Or, or the iPad, which appeared two years later after Microsoft had done it. Mm -hmm. But he waited till the technology was right. Mm -hmm. And then he did it. And so you have to understand when technology is emerging and when it's ready. The next challenge is to have an organization that is in place that's able to, to uh, capitalize on it, to be innovative, to be entrepreneurial. And what, what most organizations are really good at is, is uh, operations. Mm -hmm. They get better and better at including marketing and promotions and, and product refinement. They get really good at that. Yeah. And they're staffed with people that are really good at that. And, and the organizational process is not geared to change, strategic change. It's not geared to taking risks. Mm -hmm. It's not populated with people that are good at that. Mm -hmm. So that's a huge challenge. And, and, and increasingly, companies have to be um, agile. Mm -hmm. They have to be able to do that. So those are really the two challenges.